Okay, now we're moving on to the top center section of the haircut. But I wanted to quickly explain to you where I'm getting the guide from for this section of the haircut. Obviously our first guide was in the nape and then we traveled it up through the occipital and then we used that same guide all the way around consistently through the sides of the hair till we got just in front of the ears. Then we slightly over directed back our last two sections to maintain some length at the front. That same guide was carried all the way around through the other side of the hair but now we need to find out how that guide is going to infect us when we want to cut the top of the hair. If I take this section out and lift it up, I can see the last cut right here of our back guide. This was the angle that we cut up from the nape. So now this guideline for the top is going to be used from this hair that was last cut over the occipital. We're transferring the guide of the top of that section now to begin this section. So we're going to section off, horizontal sections, lift the hair up, look for where the guide is coming from the back, I see it right there, and we're slowly going to be cutting through the top. This time we're using a feather with a texture blade, which cuts 50% less hair than our standard blade, which we were using previously. I don't want so much texture on the ends of our hair up here, but I might go through in a little bit and put some texturing closer down the hair shaft to get more volume. Like we said, Allison's hair is very fine, and we want to use a razor technique to help plump her hair up, fluff it up a little bit, and give her that body that she's been looking for. So now we're going to be moving on to the next section forward, lifting our section up, Looking for our guide from the back. There it is on top of my fingers. I'm going to go past. Cut through our section. Again, if it's too much for you to handle, by all means drop that hair. Pick up your section and continue through. Always check to see your result before you continue forward. If you don't like what's happening, don't keep repeating it. We can always go back and correct it or change it or change the length or change the texture. But if you're not liking it, don't continue. Next section forward. Again, I can see my guideline here from the previous sections. We're going to lift it up with some tension. Put our blade in. Start cutting through that section. We're getting a lot of moment already. Her, her hair is picking up because the weight's being released on it. So we're getting a lot of volume already, which is what I like. Again, another section forward. Lift up the hair. Find our guide. Start cutting. Again, a lot of hair, so don't try and do it all at once. Keep your tension on the hair and cut through. Lots of movement, very happy. Next horizontal section, moving forward. I'm going to put myself a little bit more blade glide on right now because the hair is drying out somewhat. Again, very conditioning qualities of this excuse me, product. It helps the razor glide through the hair and also conditions the hair. So, our next section. Cutting again to the previous guide. Looking for our guide through the hair. There it is, above my fingers. I'm going to go past the section till that hair starts to fall. With tension on the section, I'm going to cut that hair. Again, don't try and do everything in one foul swoop. Pick up your section, find your guide, go a little past it. Cut the hair. 
Always feel it, see what kind of result you're getting, if you like the result. Now at this point, we've reached that area that we were working with on the sides before, where we're going to start the over direct backwards. The reason we're doing this is to maintain length at the front. If we didn't want to do that, we would keep our sections consistently pulling up away from the head. But like I said previously, we want to add a little bit of length. So we're going to be combing this back a little bit towards our guide. Find your guide, there it is, above my fingers. Let it go past a bit. Cut your section. Our final section at the front. Again, over directing this back. Maintaining length. Looking for our guide, there it is above our fingers. Pulling with tension. We want to let some of that hair fall. Put our blade in, start to cut our section. More length at the front. So we have something for Alison to play with when she does her hair. Okay, we're moving on to the last section at the front. Well, like I said before, I'm over directing this back and just cutting it to the same length as the sections behind. The reason we're doing this is because I want to maintain some length at the front so that Alison can play with her hair and move it around from side to side wherever she wants it to go. Back to talking about face shapes. Um, the most ideal face shapes are, as we know, oval or heart shaped. Um, it's very difficult to probably see heart shaped faces walking down the street, but the general shape of a heart is what's good. Wider at the top, getting narrower. Alison has a strong jawline, but her chin is very softened from that. So to me, this is somewhat oval with a little bit of a hard line on the corners. But to me, her face, she could pretty much wear anything. Again, like I said earlier, we have to consider the face shape of the client before we just put the haircut on it. Just because we see a haircut in a magazine that looks great doesn't mean it's going to look great on every single person. So we have to be really conscious of that.